Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. In our last episode, you may recall, we went back to 1863 to Great Britain and we visited the novelist Charles Dickens who wrote about the carte de visite photograph and the essence of his somewhat humorous, playful writing was that the carte de visite had changed the way that we see kings and queens and royalty. In fact, it had democratized the world. Photography had democratized the world. The kings and queens and all their finery and the paintings, well, when it came to a photograph of them, we can see the warts, the wrinkles, the disheveled clothing and all of that. And so, although Dickens was having fun, he really was getting to an essential point about the democratic value within photography, the leveling quality that a photograph, a portrait photograph had. Well, today I want to go two years earlier to 1861 in Paris, where the carte de visite was at the height of its popularity people competed for the best photograph, going to the finest photographers, waiting, making appointments weeks or a month in advance to be able to get a sitting with the highest profile lens men in the realm. And so it was uh, in 1861, the Italian novelist Giovanni Ruffini happens to be in Paris and his encounter, and we don't know if it was a real encounter that he had or a fictional account that was perhaps more fitting to his occupation, but he writes the story of the carte de visite. But instead of the democratic celebration that Dickens eventually gets to in his work, Ruffini sort of reveals the love-hate relationship with the carte de visite. So it's a fairly long story and I'm not gonna go through the entire essay. I'd love to, I'd love to go through the whole thing with you but it's a little bit too long. But I do wanna hit some of the highlights in a few passages. So I'm gonna start at the very beginning. Here we go, Giovanni Ruffini. And I should mention, this is from the story titled A Contemporary Hobby. So here we go, quotes. I don't know how it fares with you in London, but I know that we in Paris have a very sorry life of it, by which I do not allude to the frost, nor to the macadamized boulevards, nor to the tightness of the money markets, no, nor yet to the indefinite rise of house rents, but to a far worse nuisance, the cardomania. Ever since it has become the fashion to have squinting, ghastly photographs instead of the true, plain, honest visiting card, ever since it has become the fashion to make collections of these said photographs, above all, ever since the fatal invention of albums, ad hoc, farewell peace, whichever way you turn, requests for your portrait are leveled at you like so many guns. All is acceptable prey in different features, respectable age, obscure position, nothing comes amiss to that greedy monster album. So here we have Ruffini setting up the tension. Man, there's nothing worse than a, an album filled with cartes de visite. Now we get to the start of his plot. And um, I'll just read this to you so you can get a sense of where it's going. Quote, I give myself as an example. I, socially speaking, one of the most insignificant, insignificant beings in creation, had so many home thrusts to parry of late that at last I was thrown out of the saddle. A lady did that for me, a clever and accomplished blonde, beware of blondes. This was the 19th century, remember. She was giving me the honors of her album, and I was on the defensive. We came to an empty niche. She said pleasantly, calmly, 
decidedly, that is for you. I did all a man can do. Very little I allow when the adversary is one like my softly determined, smilingly implacable hostess. I laughed outright, found the joke excellent. Then I became serious. She knew my habits, my dislike of all that makes a man a plaything, and so on. Grave or gay, it mattered not. Let the fair sex alone for holding to the point when it suits them. If by New Year's Day, said the lady, this niche is not filled by your photograph, I shall have been mistaken in your gallantry. I protested in favor of my gallantry, but surely she would grant me a respite, considering that just at that moment I was very busy. So you get the sense of what's going on here, right? Um, he has been with a young lady who has uh, shared her photo album. There's an empty page in an album, and she is inviting him to give her his portrait in the carte de visite format. And he's a little flummoxed. He doesn't really quite know what to do. So he basically says, yes, I will... I will do your bidding and I will get you a photograph. It's early December when this event happens and he has until New Year's Day to get the photograph taken. So a big chunk of the story is where Rafini talks about finding a studio and being turned away, trying his best to get an appointment and being turned down. Finally, he has an idea that he's going to go to an out of the way photographer studio to try to see if he can't get an appointment. And so he does so. He finds a small out-of-the-way studio that's situated on an upper floor. It's hard to get to. It's a little crammed in space. And he manages to get an appointment for the next day. By this time, it's the almost the end of the year. He's running out of time. And he makes his appointment. And he goes in. And then he meets the photographer. And so I'm going to read you that meeting, that first meeting with the photographer. Quote, very poor light, observed the artist by way of salutation. Let us make the most of it as it is by looking sharp, said I. The man being apparently of my opinion, a few seconds were enough for him to suggest and for me to assume a becoming attitude in front of the four cannon-like tubes which we were to reproduce my respected person four times at once. Now, I'm going to pause here for a second, because when Ruffini mentions in front of the four cannon-like tubes, he's actually talking about the original invention of the patent of a camera with four lenses that would take four photographs of you. Those four photographs on a glass plate would be printed on paper, that paper would be cut in four, and those four uh, images would be pasted to a cardstock mount. The inventor of that camera, the man who patented it, was Diderie, the Parisian photographer who went on to become incredibly wealthy and famous because of his invention of the carte de visite. Anyway, this is a neat reference to the four lens camera. I'll continue. We are going to begin. Perfect immobility, if you please. Keep your eyes steadily on the handle of the door. There. The operation began and was done or not done in less than five minutes. So in this passage, Ruffini has described that camera, that successful carte de visite camera invented by Diderie. And he has talked about the process the whole thing from start to finish, uh, the conversation with the photographer, the having the image made, five minutes. So what happens from there? The whole thing falls apart. The glass negative is dropped and that uh, shatters into a million pieces. He has to go in and get another photograph made. He is on a tight deadline. He makes it to drop off the visiting card with the young lady who has requested it. And of course, she writes back. 
and here's what she has to say. Quotes, I regret very much to have missed seeing you this morning. Thank you for your card. It does not entirely satisfy me. You know, I am extremely particular about my photographs, so do not be surprised should I ask you for the sacrifice of another five minutes. We will speak of that. Come and take a family dinner with us tomorrow at half past six. Mr. Paul and Mademoiselle Laurie will be our only other guests. By the by, they both think your likeness good and mean each to them to beg you for one. So be amiable enough to bring some more of your carts to visit with you. So there you have it. Ruffini, Giovanni Ruffini, in his delightful story, A Contemporary Hobby, talking about the perils of posing for a photograph, the perils of the social ramifications and implications of photograph albums and the cardomania craze that was sweeping through Paris, then on to London and United States and the rest of the world in the early 1860s. That's it for now. We'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.